Hello, you can use splines in Wicked Engine since some time ago now, and I figured this would be a good idea to show them on a video how to use them. So to use splines, first you need to add a new entity. Scroll down to the bottom of the drop-down list and find the, the new spline, which is at, currently at the very bottom of the list. When you add the spline, seemingly nothing happens, but uh, a new spline entity was created and you can see the spline settings displayed in along the other components on this selected entity. So with the spline, the main idea is that you can add uh, control points to it to make a curve. Press on the plus button or control, do, control plus E, um, key, keyboard combination and uh, a new point will be added to the spline and uh, it will be selected and you can move it about but one point is not making any curve so let's add another point now you can again press the plus button on or control plus e on the keyboard and a new point gets added and when you have two points then you have a line connecting those two points and now let's add another point a third point makes a proper curve for you so as you can see you can really easily just uh, create a new curve and select its control points and drag them about and you can also create easily a lot more by just uh, spamming the control e combination and uh, create a more complicated spline this spline type is called the cat move rom spline so with the control points you don't get to control the tangents of the control points the spline simply moves uh, moves uh, touching all the control points and the tangents of them are computed automatically if you want to make one corner sharper then you can drag another control point uh, pretty close to it and then that kind of works like modifying tangents on a busier curve for example but I found that this kind of spline is more friendly to control so what can you do with the splines for example Wicked Engine supports to automatically create a mesh from your spline or you can also access the spline in uh, your C++ code and see what kind of functions it offers but right now I want to show the mesh generation which you can simply do within, from within the editor you simply increase the mesh subdivision of a spline and then it will create a mesh dynamically for it when you move the control points after creating the mesh the me uh, after uh, creating the mesh yes the moving this control points of the spline automatically updates the mesh which makes it uh, really simple to create like a, a road for example from splines uh, as you can see this uh, mesh is doesn't have any material it's untextured and uh, you, we can solve that but uh, i just want to explain what the mesh subdivision does if you increase this value then the mesh uh, gets more uh, gets more triangles essentially making the curve more uh, detailed if you press the control and w key combination then you go to the wireframe mode display and when you slide the mesh subdivision slider you immediately see what is happening with the generated mesh press the control w again to go back to the normal view and let's say that i want to actually create a route from this uh, with a proper texture so what i can do is just to select the main node the parents of the spline which uh, has the spline component of it on, on itself and uh, where, where the component uh, settings can be accessed for example the spline component 
Once you create a mesh from the spline by increasing the subdivision, the material for it gets created automatically as well, which uh, you can modify as you like with normal materials to modify the look of the spline mesh. To make a road, I just simply want to apply a texture on it. So click on the texture slot and uh, I will choose a road mesh which automatically appears normally on the mesh as, as you would expect. All the other normal, uh, all the other ma normal material parameters like normal map and, and all the others are supported because once this mesh is generated, it's just a normal mesh with normal material. So normal map is not really visible unless we add an actual light in the scene. So let's just do that quickly. Add the directional light, rotate it a bit and now you can see the normal map is active on the road mesh as well. Apart from a simple road, kind of a, a flat spline mesh, you can also uh, control other properties of the spline. For example, vertical subdivision, which will make it not flat, but uh, vertically subdivided as well. For example, with if you uh, go closer into it, then you can actually now move inside the spline mesh. Subdivision 1 will make a triangle, so it's not two, two sides of the mesh and, and a flat plane, but actually one more. And uh, that will make a triangle, triangular shape of the spline mesh. And if you increase it further with 2, it will be a rectangular one. And you can also, by the way, uh, rotate it along the spline axis by uh, using the rotation slider so for example if you say you want to create a kind of a corridor and that default rotation is not appropriate for that you can just simply rotate it and uh, that would not normally be possible like rotating the mesh this way but with the spline you can do that and if you increase the vertical subdivision more then it will be more circular shaped like this like a tunnel if you want to check uh, out a sample for this uh, you can also just uh, go to the content browser go to the models and then uh, find the spline test dot uh, which is here i'll open a new scene for this and then open it in this scene and as you can see, this is kind of using the same road mesh that I just created previously, but the spline test uh, automatically sets this up for you. Also with a normal map and the roughness map. And there is also another spline, which is uh, like a rusted, rusted metallic texture forming a kind of a pipe structure. And it's sample in the sample test as well, you can just uh, drag the splines around to see how the mesh generation works and uh, as well you there are the parameters of the spline mesh generation for example uh, you can also control the width of the spline and uh, these these uh, sliders control the whole spline but uh, if you select the control point for example this one you can also scale it up by pressing the uh, by entering the scaling mode with this button or by pressing uh, free on the keyboard you can also scale up individual nodes of the spline and you can also rotate them the same way as you can see it works out pretty nicely but uh, there could be cases when it uh, falls apart and the, because the mesh generation is not really perfected yet. For example, in uh, large rotations, it can kind of uh, 
flip incorrectly which is not not fixed yet but it's altogether it works out pretty nicely i think and there is another kind of feature of the spline uh, system in Bicken engine i'll open a new scene and to show that i will first add the terrain and uh, then I, uh, I will add the spline to the terrain uh, add a few new uh, control points to it and drag it out like so and uh, what I want to show you now is the terrain modifier by simply selecting any nodes of the spline you can modify the terrain modifier setting of, of it which will only be taking uh, which will be only doing anything if there is a, actually a terrain as well in your scene so i increase the terrain oh, the, the terrain modifier first which will regenerate the terrain and apply the spline to its uh, height map generation and always when you move the spline it will regenerate the terrain which is well not very ideal but uh, that is how it works right now which will be perhaps improved in the future as you can see you can create like pretty nice terrain structures with this pretty easily and the terrain modifier affects how strongly the spline affects the terrain for example if you reduce it it will kind of affect it more smoothly as you can see and if you increase it to maximum it will be a very sharp uh, uh, spline to terrain affection the terrain push down slider if you try it is uh, modifying how much the spline needs to be above the terrain so it will essentially even though the terrain kind of tries to get up to the level of the spline this just pushes down vertically the the splines level so with this you can for example create uh, if you also generate a mesh from the spline and you want the terrain to be a bit under it for some reason for example so that the terrain doesn't intersect the spline you can just control the uh, control the push down of the spline a bit uh, but let's not uh, let's just leave it as default for now and i will also reuse the terrain modifier a bit just to make it a bit nicer and uh, also the width uh, will also affect the kind of width that uh, the spline will uh, make into the terrain also if you drag individual control points with the scaling uh, the width of the control point can also be modified unfortunately for now if you modify the spline uh, that terrain gets regenerated which i said is not ideal and perhaps one day it will be improved and a good thing also about the spline is that uh, the spline terrain modifier is, is that uh, it automatically also offsets the the props like trees and the grass on the terrain to the to match the splines level you can also push up or push down the spline to like cut into the terrain like this and my last thing i think is that you can also without generating a mesh from the, from the spline just using a terrain modifier you can also apply a texture to it and th that will apply the texture to the terrain to so select the central spline node the parent and add a new material to it uh, just a new material component from this you can also just yeah, search for material by just putting text into this and add the new material so a new material uh, has been added to my spline right now 
doesn't look the best because um, the terrain texture fall off is probably not uh, not very good so as you can see the base material gets applied to the terrain without a texture since i haven't set that up yet it uh, applies a white texture to the terrain and with the texture fall off you can, you can control how how strongly the texture blends with the terrain let's leave it at something like in the middle let's go back to the splines material and uh, I will apply a, a ground texture to it oh and not the normal map but into the base color map that will make the terrain get that uh, same texture that I applied to the spline uh, on the splines path this texture mapping is a bit different than what you would get from generating a mesh from the spline because this will use the terrain's UV and uh, not the spline not it will not uh, display the texture stretched into the spline's direction which uh, could be um, I, I wasn't sure if whether which one was really more needed more so currently this was easier to implement maybe later uh, a more kind of a different kind of texture mapping can be added what i mean by that is if you for example apply the road texture to it that wouldn't work out very nicely because the texture mapping is not what you would expect the road to be so let's try that i'll apply the road texture to the spline and as you can see it's not stretched along the road direction or the spline direction but it just uh, uses the terrain's uv so for this kind of road texture it's not not very good but uh, for like other kind of texture like this kind of dirt or ground texture it works out more nicely okay i think that covers mostly everything i wanted to cover today so i hope you enjoyed this video try out the spline editor in wicked engine and see you around in the next video